Welcome to Lecture Online. Here's our next example of how to graph a rational function. The function is y equals 3x squared minus 2x minus 1 divided by 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. So the first step always is to look at the denominator and determine what x cannot be. So let's try to factor the denominator and see what we get. So this can be written as 3x squared minus 2x minus 1 divided by and let's see if we can factor this, so that would be 2x and x. We have a positive and a negative, we need a plus 3 there, so let's see here. How about plus 2 and minus 1? Uh, that would be 4x minus x is 3x, and that would be minus 2. Yes, that works. So there we go. From that, we can determine what x cannot be, because if either of those two binomials are equal to 0, then we have a 0 denominator. So x plus 2 equals 0 will violate the denominator not being 0 and 2x minus 1 oh, 2x minus 1 equals 0 would also violate that so we have x equals minus 2 and 2x equals 1 or x equals 1 half so that means that x cannot equal negative 2 and x cannot equal 1 half otherwise we'd have a 0 denominator so that determines the two vertical asymptotes let's go ahead and Here's our y-axis, here's our x-axis, so x equals negative 2, 1, 2, there we'll have a vertical asymptote, and at x equals 1 half, so there x equals 1, that's negative 1, 0, 1, 1 half right here, there will be another vertical asymptote, x equals 1 half. All right, so we know whatever happens, the graph will never cross those two vertical asymptotes. Now, do we have horizontal asymptotes? And Probably yes. We take a look at this and we say, well, we can rewrite this. Notice we have an x square and x square. The trick is, that's my red pen, when we rewrite this to y equals 3x squared minus 2x minus 1 divided by 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. And the trick is to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 1 over x squared divided by 1 over x squared. Again, it's 1 over the x with the largest exponent. Notice it's like multiplying by 1 and nothing changes except the format. Now y can be written as 3 minus 2 over x minus 1 over x squared divided by 2 plus 3 over x minus 2 over x squared. Now to find the horizontal asymptotes we are going to find the limit as x approaches infinity and see what we get. So the limit as x approaches infinity of 3 minus 2 over x minus 1 over x squared divided by 2 plus 3 over x minus 2 over x squared. All we need to do now is just plug in infinity for the x's so we get 3 minus 2 over infinity minus 1 over infinity squared divided by 2 plus 3 over infinity minus 2 over infinity squared and again, whenever you divide by infinity or infinity squared, it's like that's, uh, you get 0, and so this becomes 3 divided by 2. Whenever x approaches infinity or x approaches negative infinity, y will tend to go to 3 over 2. And that will be our horizontal asymptote. So 1, 2, this is 3 over 2, and so we'll have a horizontal asymptote right here. Now remember, the horizontal asymptote can be crossed by the graph. It doesn't violate anything. We just know that the horizontal, horizontal asymptote tells us as x becomes really large, the function will tend towards that asymptote, either from above or from below. And at this point, we don't know yet which way. Now we have some regions. We have region 1, region 2, region 3, separated by those two vertical asymptotes. So we're going to try some test points on either side of those asymptotes. So we can try x equals 0. We can try x equals 1 and x equals negative 3. That is a representative point in each of the three regions created by the vertical asymptotes. When x equals 0, y, when x equals 0, is equal to negative 1 over negative 2, which is equal to 1 half. So when x equals 0, y is 1 half, so that's this point right there. And let me do it in red so it's easier to find. So we know that the graph grows to that point right there. Now let's find another test point, x equals 1. y, when x equals 1, is equal to, that would be 3 times 1 squared, that would be 3 minus 2 
minus 1 divided by, that would be uh, 1, that would be 2, uh, plus 3, minus 2, so it would be 0 over 3, which of course is 0. So when x equals 1, y is 0. That's this point right there. A third point at x equals negative 3, so y, when x equals negative 3, is equal to, so we have 3 times negative, negative 3 squared, minus 2 times negative 3, minus 1 divided by 2 times negative 3 squared plus 3 times negative 3 minus 2. Simplified, this will be 9 times 3 which is 27 plus 6 minus 1 divided by this will be 18 minus 9 minus 2 that will be 33 minus 1 which is 32 divided by 9 minus 2 that would be 7 so 7 goes into 32 about 4.5 times, that's roughly 4.5. So when x is equal to negative 3, y is equal to about 4.5. So that would be, um, uh, let me see here. That would be 1, 2, 3, oops, 3 is a little, yeah, one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So right about there. So this is the point, negative 3, and about uh, 32 over 7. So now we have three points, one here, one there, and one in between. I have a fairly good idea that here the graph will look like this because as x goes large, we tend to go towards that asymptote, and here we can never cross the vertical asymptote, so that's what that looks like on that side. On this side here, again, this will increase towards the asymptote right there, so the asymptote will continue on like that, and over here it will tend to go towards the asymptote over here. So that's the graph on those two sides. Oh, 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 oh. I'm going to the wrong asymptote. Let me try that again. Here's that point that we're starting from. I should have drawn my asymptote a little further up like this because I know that I cannot cross those vertical asymptotes. That means I'm hemmed in by this asymptote, not the other one. So it goes like this. And here this goes down like that. Okay, that's much better. Not this one over here. That one will not be crossed by either one of the two lines. Now what about here, this point right there? Does that tell us what this looks like in here? Not really. We probably need a couple more points. So let's try and see what we come up with. How about if we try x equals negative 1? y, when x equals negative 1, is equal to, so that will be negative 1 squared, that's 1 times 3, minus negative 1 times 2 is a positive 2, and minus 1, that's a numerator, and in the denominator, negative 1 squared times 2 gives us 2, negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, and minus 2, so that gives me 5 minus 1, that is 4, divided by, uh, that would be uh, minus 3, which is equal to minus 4 thirds. Notice, when x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to minus 4 thirds, that's minus 1 and a third, that would be about, uh, so let's see here, this is negative 1, this is negative 2, that means it would be somewhere in this neighborhood. Notice the two points. As I get closer to this asymptote, it becomes a negative number. If I get closer to that as asymptote, it goes to a positive number. So it looks like my graph will probably look like this in between those two asymptotes. If you're not sure, you may want to try a couple more points. You may want to try minus one and a half, which probably gives you a point down here somewhere. You may want to get uh, another trial point, x equals one half, will be right about here. And then as you get more points, you get more confidence that the curve will look like that between the two asymptotes. Now we know what the graph looks like. Now let's find the domain and the range. The domain is equal to all x's such that what are the limitations? x cannot be negative 2, and x cannot be 1 half. But it can be everything else, which means x can start at minus infinity and go all the way to negative 2. And it can start at negative 2, not including negative 2. And let me get rid of this here. Negative 2, and go all the way up to positive 1 half. Not including positive 1 half, and it can go away from positive one half 
all the way to positive infinity, not including positive infinity. And so those are all the ranges, or I should say those are all the numbers that x can be, so therefore that defines the domain. To define the range is all possible y values. But notice, because of this one here in the middle, you can see that there's no restriction whatsoever that y can be. y can be any value up to infinity and negative infinity, and so therefore y is an element of the reals. Oop, such that y is an element of all the real numbers. And that's how you define the domain and the range for this particular example.